So we're going to talk about annuities, um, uh, retirement funds, loans, uh, and payments. Uh, so like, you know, those wonderful JG Wentworth commercials, I, it's my money, I want it now things. And we're going to, that's what we're talking about. So we're going to talk about, and we're going to start with what we've kind of already done before, which is we have money in an account, thirty-two grand or thirty-two hundred dollars. We have an annual interest rate of six percent compounded monthly, so 0.5 percent each month. At the end of each month, you deposit two hundred and seventy-five dollars into the account. So this is kind of important because this is the difference. <clears throat> we make a payment into the account each month. Um, so this is something. Uh, that you would do for something like a 401k or a retirement fund. If anyone's in the state, the state system kind of works this way at times in theory, but that's what we're working on. So on this, what we're going to do is we'll take that first amount, that 3,200. I have this backwards, of course. So we take 3,200. Here, 3,200 times 0.005, and that will give us our interest on prior balance. Let me get my calculator, which would be $16. So to make sure you're doing it right, because usually they give you an answer, <clears throat> you have $20.39 down here. So your all these answers above here should be less than, will be less than $20.39. So then from here, you take the $3,200 plus your $1,600 or $16 plus $275, and that will give you your new ending balance. So $3,200 plus 16 plus 275 is 3,491. Once you have that down here, you go back over here and you do the same thing again, 3,491 times point I'm oh, sorry, 0 0.005, which would give us $17.46, because it wants it's in the nearest cent. So this was 16. Seventeen dot four five five, which rounds up. So plus one plus two hundred seventy five, which means we'd over here we'd have, and we could check it three thousand seven hundred eighty three dollars and forty six cents. So we all we did was add up the previous prior balance, our interest, and our monthly deposit. And that equals that part. And that's what we do for each one. So we, then we take this value, $3,783.46 times, sorry, times 0 0.005 to get our next balance. Which would be eighteen ninety two. Oh, yeah. Double check it because I did rounding. Six times. Yep. <clears throat> so that month we'd make eighteen dollars and ninety two cents. Then we take and add all these values up again. 
So 18.92 plus 3783.46 plus $275 is $4,077.38. Then four thousand seventy seven dot thirty eight here, and then we want to make sure that this is correct. So we do four thousand seventy seven dot three eight times zero point zero zero five. So this is a good way to check if you made an error somewhere up here. If you take this number times that point oh five and you get a different answer here, you made an error somewhere above. Eight times point zero zero five is twenty dollars and thirty nine cents. We have the right amount. Um, uh, is that written into the contract? Because I don't think they could do that. So 4077.38 plus 20.39 plus 275 is $4,372.77. Also remember they can't do, and I'm pretty sure any actual inter or stuff based off of your, you might want to check, but they should not be able to do anything for like late fees on late fees. So like if say you paid $1,200 a month, <laughs> good luck on that one, in rent, but you pay it late and they assess like a $300 late fee, whatever. If you pay the $1,200, they can't charge a late fee on your next month based on your previous late fee. It's kind of weird. Anywho, so this is how Yeah, imagine that. Um, yeah, always check your contract, sorry. Uh, so this is how you do the uh, interest and monthly deposit and any balance. This is how a lot of <coughs> uh, 401ks and retirement funds and um, different uh, money market funds will do their work. Um, the difference is here is whether you get a flat rate here or you have a floating rate. So it just depends on what the money's in and what their terms are. So we do have, of course, there's this time value money thing. So let me actually share screen and not just. So we can put in the same thing. So if we were, uh, I know it's hard to say, it says Dara is saving for retirement by making regularly quarterly payments into an IRA. She deposits a payment of, this looks, looks like $130. Let me double check. Uh, you don't need to see this. Uh, at an interest rate of 8.7 for 26 years, how much will her account be after 26 years? So we do have, we're looking for the future value. She is making, looks like $130. Um, she's doing quarterly payments. So there's four repayments. And she is doing 8.7%. Let me make sure I'm getting the right one. Oh, because you're making a payment, I almost forgot that has to be a negative number. And we don't know what the future value is. That's what we're trying to figure out. Um, so we have uh, 
on the number of compounding periods here. So we know we have four quarters in a year and we know she's gonna do it over 26 years. So what we have to do is take 26 years times four payments to get 104 recurring payments. Uh, we have 8.7% and we're doing four payments per year, four compounding. So we're gonna look and try and do a future FV solve. So after 26 years, depositing $130, she'll have 50 grand in her account. <clears throat> So the fun thing about this is if you end up doing this monthly or bi-weekly, so we do 104 times 26. So this 2,704 is if you take it like every paycheck and put that amount in. You end up having, oh, they gave you an error, 29. So 1,000, uh, way too many. Um, uh, 12, 52, there we go. I did the wrong thing. One, two, three, four, five, six. So if you were to take that $130 and do it bi-weekly over 26 years, you would have $7 million. So if you are going to do retirement and they do specific amounts of payments uh, and it, say, even if they do 104, so if they do quarterly payments, you're still looking at, actually, no, it would be 100, it'd be 20, 12 times 26. Uh, let me see. 12 times 26 is 312 payments. So if you do monthly payments, you're still looking at half of like $53,000 off $130 a paycheck or $260 a paycheck. So the more money you put in, the earlier you get, the more you get out of it. So in this, we would have zero here. Our payments would be negative 130. And here would be X. So let me put this back in, 30. We're solving for this. We have 104 over here. And these are four and four. So we would have 104, which is four times 26. So that's the years. And this is the uh, quarters. Our interest was 8.7. And this would be four. So there's four payments or compounding per year. And that ends up with 50,040. It's about $50,000 a year or total <clears throat> at the end of it. So that's kind of how the IRAs work and how this works. It's not supposed to be your main retirement. It's supposed to be a secondary, ideally. And you also have limits what you can put in per year. And then you come to this thing here. Uh, so. You deposit $4,000 each year in the account. So when it earns 4,000 interest compounded annually, uh, how much do you have in the account after 40 years? So this is the formula we use. So A is the balance after however many years. So usually what we're asking for. PMT is how much you put in, so $4,000. R is the interest rate, again, 4%, 0.04. N compounding period, so this is compounded annually. And T is the number of years, which is 20. So we're looking for A.
payment is 4,000. R, the rate, is 4% or 0 0.04. N would be that one, the number of years, or are compounded annually, and T, we're doing it for 20 years. So we put this into a formula here. So A equals the payment, $4,000. We've got two parentheses. One plus our rate, which is 4%, 0, 0.4 over our number of payments, which is one, to the one times 20. And then we subtract one from that. And then we put this over R, which is 0 0.04, over N, which is one. <clears throat> this is, by the way, why I tend to use Excel because these get kind of annoying. So we have 4,000 times, so 1.04, because 0 0.04 divided by one is 0 0.04 to the 20th minus one over 0 0.04. So we'll do the 1.04 to the 20th gives us 2.19. I'll go ahead and subtract one here. So we leave, we're left with 1.1911. So 4,000 4, times 1.19 over 0 0.04. So 4,000 times 1.19 is 4,764.49. Four, over 0 0.04. So then we take that number and divide it by 0 0.04. And we're left with a hundred. We have one hundred nineteen thousand one one nine one one two point three one. So one hundred nineteen thousand one hundred twelve dollars and thirty one cents. So from here, I'm gonna go ahead and show you how to do the Excel version of this because this is kind of, like I said, kind of annoying. So in here, we have A, uh, see the formula is, can I just copy the formula? One second. Uh, I just select, yeah, I can. It's not letting me copy it. So we have A, we have payment, R, N, and T. So in this one, we're gonna be looking for the payment, or so the A, so we still have that payment. We have the interest, annual, and RT, which is 20 years. So we can do the formula. Let me get the formula up. Where is it? Get the formula so I can see it over here. So we take the payment here, B3 times two parentheses. One plus R divided by N, close parentheses, to the, and I usually do open parentheses for these, 
n, which is b5, times t, which is b6. And then I subtract one from that, close parentheses. <clears throat> and then I divide, and I do another open parentheses because I'm paranoid, r divided by n. And I would get my answer. So the good thing about this is, one, it checks my math over here. And two, going forward, I could use this for other things. So I'll go ahead and do both the math here and the math here. So let me go ahead and do this. Do, do, dollars, do, percent. There we go. So this is balance after T years. So next question we have is you deposit $500 each month into account earning 5% interest. So we have a payment. is equal to 500. Our deposited each month. So we have that the number is going to be 12 because we're doing it 12 times. We have a rate of 5%. And we have how many? We have 15 years. So this is going to ask for more information than just the end, which actually it does want to have, no, the end. So how much will we have in the account after 15 years? So we can, we're looking for. A. So A is equal to that payment, $500 times one plus R over N, 0 0.05 over 12 to the NT. So we have 12 times 15. And that's all minus one over 0 0.05 divided by 12. So from here, we can start simplifying inside. So number that pick, cop, pick, came up the same math twice is 0 0.05 divided by 12. So point zero zero. 4166 repeating. So if that was easier, I would have actually solved for both of them at the same time. It's not, so I wouldn't. But I had to add one to that here. So I have 1.00416 repeating. <clears throat> and then I could go ahead and take that to a power and then open parentheses. We have 12 compounded monthly, and we're doing that over 15 years. Close parentheses, so 180 payments, which would give us an inside value of 2.1137. So we have 500 times 2.1137 minus 1 over 0 0.05 divided by 12. So I go ahead and subtract one from that. And then times it by 500. These us with 556.85. Oh, I can write, it'd be amazing. There we go. Divided by 0 0.05 divided by 12. So I could do this one of two ways. I could do math all in one, or watch this. I could take this times 12 on top and bottom to get rid of it. Trust me, it works. So times 12. And then that leaves me 
divided by 0 0.05. So 133,000. Or 556.85 divided by, open parentheses, 0 0.05 divided by 12. <clears throat> which gives us 133,644. So after 15 years, we'll have 133,644. So how much, that's how much we're putting into the account. Um, or we'll have at the end of the account. They also wanna know how much we're gonna put into the account. So this is a little easier. So we have that 12 times five, 12 times, sorry, 12 times 15, which we did before was 180, but 12 times 15, we were gonna do it anyway, 180. So we have 180 payments we were making. So this is the number of payments. That we're calculating right here. So we take the number of payments. And then we're going to take that times how much we're paying. So we're taking 180 times 500. To find out that we're putting in $90,000. So we put in 90 grand. So how much total interest do you earn? This is just A minus uh, basically uh, amount. So 133,644 minus that 90 grand. So 43,644. But something that they don't really tell you is essentially the longer that keeps in there, the more interest you have. Because right now, if you have 133,644 uh, and you take it times 0 0.05 divided by 12, that next month you're putting in more money or you're putting in more interest than you are money. So from there, you start making a lot more money because essentially you're doubling the amount that goes in each month. So the sooner you start saving for these type of things. I know it's kind of hard at times, the more money you get out of it. And then it comes to um, annuity formula payouts. So basically, let's say you retired or you get hit by a car and somebody pays you a lump sum that's paid out as annuity or you win the lottery. Um, you want to withdraw a certain amount of money each year for 20 years. So $30, $35,000 is a relatively okay amount. Uh, you could live off of that if you have no other bills. Barely. Um, trust me, I've done it. Uh, but a lot of retirees kind of work on that. I also remember, for instance, you have a, usually have Social Security on top of it. So add another ten dollars or $20,000. Uh, so if you have an account that earns 10% interest and you have 35, withdraw $35,000 a year for 20 years, how much do you need at the account at the beginning? So P0 is your account at the beginning. So your payment is how much you're withdrawing each year, which case this case is 35,000. R is the retirement rate. By the way, you should never expect to get 10% interest when you're retired. You should expect four, three to 4% interest when you're retired. Um, 
N is the compounding period and T is the number of years. Uh, so we don't get any information on whether it's compounded one way or the other. So we assume annual. So we're looking for P0. So P, the payment, we're gonna get 35 grand a year. The rate is an insane 10%, if I can draw 0 0.1. You know, I just realized I didn't do this with Excel. I'll come back to this. So I'm gonna show you how to do this in Excel real quick. Um, so let's do, how much put into account. So we're gonna go ahead and check this real quick. So we're putting $500 in, 0 0.05. We're doing monthly, so 12 and it's 15 periods. So because I rounded earlier, I got a different result. Please do not round to the end. <clears throat> so how much we put into the, uh, uh, put in is what we're looking for, which will be the answer. So what we need to find is N times T. So N times T is 12 times 15. And we have to do our payments, which is 500. So 180 times that 500 would give us essentially that we put in $90,000. Um, and then total interest would be 133,000 minus that 90,000. So once you have it, it's relatively straightforward to just put it in. Um, so for the next one, we're making, once again, we're making a payment. So we have that 10% interest, good luck. Um, we have a time of 20 years. And we're doing an annual interest rate. At least we're under that assumption because it doesn't tell us. So in here we have that P0. It's gonna be equal to 35,000. times one minus one plus, uh, if I can, R over N. So 0 0.1, 0 0.1 over one, which is ends up being 0 0.1 to the, and this is the important part, the negative NT. So N is one times 20. And then all this, if I can draw a straight line, to R, so 0 0.1 over N, one. So we have 35,000 times one minus 1 1.1 to the negative 20th over 0 0.1. because I just want to get rid of this down here. Whenever I have this decimal point, I can literally move this to the right one and add as 10 up here. So I just added an extra one here. So $350,000 gets rid of it. And I'm going to write down what I did. Rid of decimal and bottom and added a tens place to 35 a to compensate. So whenever you specifically, when you have that 10%, you can just add a zero to 30, uh, the payment here. And this turns in from 0 0.1 to one, <clears throat> getting rid of the bottom. So then we do 1.1 to 
to the uh, make sure if you're using the, the this uh, Windows calculator, you don't hit the minus sign because it will try to subtract uh, negative 20, oh, 20 negative. So 1.1 to the 20 negative gives you 0.1486. So I'll go ahead and store that. So then I take one minus that number gives us 0 0.8513. So 350,000. times 0 0.8513, 0 0.8513, which would give us 297,974 dollars and 73 cents. So that it would be how much money is left over after, or that's how much money you had to have at the startup to get $35,000 a year for 20 years, given you have an account that earns 10%, which is insanely high percentage. <clears throat> to get Excel to do this for you, we're looking for P0. Uh, 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 pay, uh, P0. We have the payment R and T. So this is what we're getting out. Let me get this over here so I can set this up. So we have the same problem, 35,000.1, one payment for 20 years. Format things. So once again, our payment, or see our P0 is equal to our payment times one minus open parentheses, one plus, and because I'm paranoid, R divided by N. I don't know why that's a dollar sign. To, oh, sorry, to the negative n times t. And then that's divided by r divided by n. That's percentage. And I got a different number. Why did I get a different number? Two, three, one. There we go, I think that was it. Okay, gotta love this. So payment times one minus, open parentheses, one plus R divided by N, close parentheses to the negative N times T, close parentheses divided by R divided by N. There we go. I don't know what happened, but sometimes when you make an error, you just start over from scratch and see if you get it. So then this is dollars. So we had an answer of $297,974.73. And, 
And that's what we get for our annuity payout. So it's the same amount, which we like to see. So chapter seven. So <clears throat> this is the same thing we've done. Uh, so we have the same answer here. That's the 297,000. Nine hundred seventy-four dot seventy-three. So, how much are you going to pull out of the account? The amount we need to do n times t again. So we have one times twenty, and our payment, which is this. So our, the money we pull out is gonna be equal, to, sorry, the payment, not that. Payment, right? So our amount would be 35,000 times 20 or $700,000. So you're gonna pull over 20 years, 700 grand. So how much money that's interest? Once again, this is, so this would be 35,000 times one times 20. So the payment times N times time. So the interest part would be the absolute value, 297,974.73 minus 700,000. This would be 297,974.73. So $402,205.27. So a vast majority of this ends up being interest. So total interest would be the amount minus your initial. Easy peasy, annoying formulas, I'm sorry. So on to <clears throat> another one of these guys. Um, so, 18% interest, which is insane, once again. Uh, but this is borrowing, so this is the other end. So if you're gonna borrow $4,300 at 18% annual interest rate, compounded monthly, uh, uh, so this is actually kind of normal, sadly, interest rates. Um, at the end of each month, you make a $225 payment. So after four months, how much have you actually paid on the loan? Let's find out. So the first one, you take that $4,300 times it by 0 0.015, which would give you $1,000. So at this point, to find your ending balance, you take your prior balance, add your interest, subtract your payment. So 4,300 plus 6,450 gives you a balance without the payment of 4,364.50, 
and then you subtract $225. $4,139.50. So this was $64.50. Then you take this down here, $4,139.50. So four thousand one hundred thirty nine fifty times zero point zero one five is equal to point zero one five sixty two dollars and nine cents. So your interest after one payment goes down $2.41 after one. So remember, we're going to add here and subtract here. So we're going to add $62, or so $4,139.50 to plus 62.09. So our prior balance or our prior balance plus our interest is $4,201.59. We'll want to subtract $225 to get an ending balance of $3,976.59. 3976.5. And I cannot remember the last number. Nine. So that is our ending balance after two months. So this comes back over here. 3900 76.59. So now we get to get a, a good check to see if what we did was right up above 3,976.59 times 0 0.015. So that should be equal to 59.65. And looking at the trend, it looks about right because we've lost about $2.50, $2.50 off of this should get us pretty close to 59.65. That's 59. Uh, so times 0 0.015, 59.65. So that is correct. So you add here, you subtract here <coughs> to $3,811.24, which goes down here. And then you do it one more time, $3,811.24 times 0 0.015 equals 3811.24 times 0 0.015 times 0 0.015, $57.17. And as you see, as you keep on going down, the amount of interest inc or decreases and the amount that it decreases by keeps on getting bigger because you're making more and more payment on the prior balance on, on the principal, which is good. So we take 38, 11, 24, you add 57, 17, and you subtract 225. <clears throat> so you have three thousand six hundred forty-three dollars and forty-one cents. Six forty-three dots for one. So after four months, you have paid nine hundred dollars, and you have taken off six hundred and fifty-six dollars off of your total balance at the beginning. So they have made about $240 off of interest, off of you. Welcome to loans. So of course, 
there's a formula. So we have the same thing, P0 here is the balance account at the beginning. Uh, payment, PMT is your payment. R is the annual interest rate, APR, in decimals. Uh, N is the number of compounding periods in one year. Uh, T is the number of years you plan on borrowing the money. So you have, you'll have questions like this. They'll tell you 48 months and then four years. So all you do to find the number of, number is 12, or sorry, four divided, or 48 divided by four, which would give you 12, even though it says months. So here, uh, what will your monthly payments be? So it's looking for P. So we have 16,000, I'll see a P zero. And then we'll have uh, R, is 2%, which is 0 0.02. Uh, so we have 48 months as the term. So that is, N would be 12 because you're paying monthly. And T would be four because we have four years. So on this one, we had to get this by itself. So we will go ahead and set this up. So 16,000 is equal to, let's do P. I'm just going to use a PMT times one minus. So this is the same formula, by the way, as this here, if you look at it. Payment one minus one plus R over N to the NT to the RN, R over RN. So we're using the same exact formula. So it's just, we're looking at it. We're looking at how much payment you have. So one plus uh, R is 0 0.02 over N, which is 12 to the negative NT. So they've actually calculated this to you for you. So it's negative 48. I don't, didn't need that. And all of that is over 0 0.02 divided by 12. <clears throat> so because of what is set up here, the first thing I do is multiply both sides by 0 0.02 divided by 12 on each side, 0 0.02 divided by 12. So see if we can get that easier. Of course not, times 0 0.02. So we do 16,000 times 0 0.02 and then divide that by 12, 26.6 repeating. So we've calculated this part out. These will cancel. So that means your pay equals your payment times one minus one plus 0 0.02 divided by 12 to the negative 48. So uh, we do 0 0.02 divided by 12 plus one. And then we take this number to the 48 negative, gives us 0.92. Uh, then you do, let's go ahead and put that in clear memory plus. So one minus, your memory recall of 0 0.07. So 26.6.6 repeating, gonna be equal to your payment times 0 0.0768. Zero, 
seven, six, eight. So divide both sides by that number. So 26.67 divided by 0 0.0768 would mean that your monthly payments would be equal to $347.22. Three forty-seven dot two two, so that's equal to payment. Okay, in here, monthly payments are our loans. So we are looking for payment. We have a P zero, uh, R and and T. So we know twelve. 4.02, and we had a $16,000 loan. So that, 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 that. So on this, we want to make our lives easier. Um, and so we do know, looking at this, that we, if we take, let me go down here, this and move it over to this side, like we did at the beginning, we have P0 times R over N. R over N. And then take that all divided by this monster thing. One minus one plus R over, why is my N keep on doing that? R over N is negative N T. And that's going to be equal to our payment. So what we could do, so this is equal to the payment times, I'm going to put in parentheses, the rate divided by N. Put this in another parentheses because I'm paranoid. And then all that's divided by one minus open the parentheses one plus and we have that rate divided by the n and that's taken to the negative n times t and that should give us our total rate of payment 347 12 347 uh, i was off by a dime i would count that as a rounding error. So using this, rewriting the formula or running it normally, all will get you the same amount. And the last one, and then we can get done for the day because I'm sure your my brains are fried because I love doing this. So we're going to go ahead and use, um, so you can afford $900 payment. So this is slightly different. So what we can afford uh, you found a 30 year loan at 7% interest. So this is for mortgages. Um, let's do another one for mortgage. How big a house? So we're looking at P zero is what we want to find. So we have P payment R and T. So we're gonna do it over here and over there. So they want to know P zero. So we have, let me stop doing that computer. Payment at 900. That's what you can afford a month. Uh, the <clears throat> we're paying monthly, so n will be 12. The time will be a 30 year rate, 30 years. And your rate is in a terrible 7% or 0 0.07. So they want to know how big of a house you can afford. So we put in $900 here and times one minus one plus 
r over n, so 0 0.07, so 0 0.07 over 12 to the negative 12 times 30. And all that is over 0 0.07 divided by 12. So we'll go ahead and calculate this middle part out. So negative 12 or 12 times 30 uh, is negative three or ends up being 360. So negative 360. Uh, point zero seven times, or sorry, divided by 12. Point zero seven divided by 12 plus one is 1.0583 repeating. Once again, I don't recommend you putting this down and because then you're going to have to immediately take it to a different power. So uh, 360 negative. So 0.123. So I'm going to go ahead and clear out my memory and then store this. So one minus that memory recall would be 0.87679 repeating or random number. So 900 times 0 0.87679. And that's over 0 0.07 divided by 12. So times 900, 789.1147 over 0 0.07 divided by 12. So then we take it .07. So that would be one hundred thirty five thousand two hundred seventy six dollars and eleven cents. Which in Phoenix would not even get you a studio apartment. One thirty five two seventy six point eight one. So, how much money would you pay the loan company? So, this again is at nine hundred dollars times that twelve times thirty. So, payment times N times T. Nine hundred times twelve times thirty is three hundred twenty-four thousand dollars. So, how much of that's interest? Once again, uh, so that's paid minus P zero. So minus one thirty-five two seventy-six point eight one one hundred eight. One hundred and eighty-eight thousand seven hundred twenty-three dollars and nineteen cents. Eighty-eight seven twenty-three nineteen. So you paid more than twice the amount for the house over thirty years. So doing this here is the same thing as over here. So I can copy the formula over here. So payments, we're looking at $900 payments, 0 0.07, 12, and we're doing it over 30 years. 1,500 years. <clears throat> we had $135,276.81, which is what we have here. So we do, um, how much did we pay? That's okay. 
So amount and times t payment. So the payment is this nine hundred dollars. The n times t is this twelve times thirty. So we're paying nine times nine hundred times this. So we're paying that three hundred twenty-four thousand and. The word paying at 324,000 equals the 324,000 minus 135,000, so 188,000. And that would be the end of that. Let me.